Hey, what's up everyone? Mac Murdoch from OPT and this is my personal rig. To a lot of beginning astrophotographers, this might look a little intimidating, but don't worry because in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down everything common astrophotography rigs are made of so you can understand the job of every cable, camera, and attachment. And yes, this is my actual astrophotography rig that I shoot all my images on and I'm taking it apart for you guys. So please give this video a like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. Also, we're gonna be making an episode going over step-by-step -step upgrade paths and progressions from someone who has never even owned a camera before to building a rig like this and even more. If you're interested in building this specific rig for yourself, I've included all the links to all the pieces of gear in the description below. So if you've seen our other videos, you know that I'm a wizard. So let's take this thing apart. Iggity bop in the boot. <laughs> all right, well, this is my rig all taken apart. Let's go over and see what each piece is useful for. So first we have two cameras on this rig. The first one is my main imaging camera, the ASI 2600mm Pro. And this little guy is the ASI 120mm Mini, which is a great inexpensive camera. The ASI 2600, in my opinion, is one of the top five best cameras on the market and for many reasons. We made a video explaining all the reasons why that you can click on right here. But a general overview of this camera is that it's very sensitive to light. It records 91% of the light that hits the sensor and it's got a pretty big APS-C size sensor with very small pixels, allowing you to get the fine details in your image and a much bigger field of view than you normally would with a micro four thirds size sensor. On the other hand, the ASI 120 has a tiny sensor, but it also doesn't need to have a giant sensor considering its only function is to pick one star, lock onto it, and when it moves a pixel, sends that data to the mount so it can correct itself. Guide cameras don't need to be extraordinary high-tech cameras since you're not really imaging with it. Here we have a filter wheel a ZWO 36 millimeter seven position with all my filters nicely installed inside. These filters help me photograph both broadband targets like galaxies and narrowband targets like nebulas. I'm using a monochrome camera, so I need a filter wheel to be able to produce the color images. Inside my filter wheel, I have 36 millimeter unmounted chroma filters. From position one to seven, we have luminance, red, blue, green, hydrogen alpha, sulfur two, and oxygen three. The seven position gives me the ability to have all the broadband LRGB filters and the HAS203 narrowband filters, which is pretty much all that I need. Make sure that when you're buying filters and a filter wheel, that you get the right size filters for your specific sensor, or else you're gonna have major vignetting. If you have a full frame camera, you're gonna want two inch filters or bigger. Then over here, this big red box is the Prima Luce Eagle. This is the brain of the rig. At some point, I was tired of being tethered to my telescope with a big computer and a bunch of cables running everywhere, so I invested into the Prima Luce Eagle 3. Not only does this power my rig, but it also adjusts my dew straps, controls my mount, my camera, focuser, rotator, and guider, and controls everything wirelessly. The Eagle is basically a computer that allows you to load on your favorite astro programs like you normally would on your imaging laptop, and now be able to broadcast that wirelessly to your phone, tablet, or computer. It's definitely been a help with cable management and power organization. Here, we have an off-axis guider, which is an advanced way of doing auto guiding. Auto guiding is essential for being able to expose for long, long times without star trails because it watches a star and tells your mount to make small corrections if that star begins to drift. The off-axis guider basically sits in your imaging train like I'll show in a second and the light comes through, hits the small prism and reflects up into your guide camera. An off-axis guider is a great way to reduce the weight on your scope instead of using a guide scope, guide camera and the rings to attach it. Unlike a guide scope, an off-axis guider lets you guide at the same focal length as your main telescope for more accurate guiding. There are some drawbacks to using an off-axis guider, like not being able to find a star if you're using a small sensor and a high focal length. In all honesty, I feel like I've only run into that problem maybe once or twice a year. At that point, I just correct it by using a bigger sensor like my ASI 174. This 
is my field flattener. When I first bought my telescope, I had no idea that you needed a field flattener if you wanted nice stars from edge to edge. So I ended up taking all my images thinking my telescope was broken. Most refractors, because of the lenses, normally have some distortion along the edges due to the concave shape of the glass. These field flatteners will counteract that distortion and give you nice, clean stars from edge to edge. Check out this image of Andromeda before I even knew that you had to buy one. You can notice the elongated stars on the side. For larger targets, you can buy a reducer flattener combo that will flatten your field as the title suggests, but it will also make your scope faster and give you a wider field of view. For example, when I know I'm gonna be shooting a large target like Andromeda or the Lagoon, I'll put on my Prima Luce 0.6 field flattener reducer, which will turn my 952 millimeter telescope into a 571 millimeter telescope and turn its f7.5 f-stop into its much faster f4.5. And here we have the electronic focuser, the Optech FT20 Focus Links. Optech is one of the best on the market, which is why we are so proud to work with them on the Radian electronic focuser. Many beginners don't realize that things like temperature and other factors like changing filters can cause images to slightly get out of focus. My electronic focuser is controlled from my eagle and set to refocus itself throughout the night without me touching it. Every time the weather drops five degrees and my telescope expands or contracts, it focuses. Every time the filter changes, it focuses. Every time you smash the like button, it focuses. It definitely adds to the convenience, but also the accuracy. Also, the really nice thing about this focuser, just like the Radiant focuser, is you can engage and disengage it, allowing you to focus manually. And this is my camera rotator, the Pixis LE Rotator by Optech. I'm one of those imagers that have to pack up my gear, drive out to a dark location every time I want to image my target which means I have to set up and tear down my scope every time losing my orientation of my target based on the way my camera was positioned. This rotator will rotate my camera and find the exact orientation that it was imaging at the night before. Also in SGP's Framing and Mosaic Wizard, I can set the right angle and orientation to get that perfect framing that I want instead of manually having to adjust the camera which can be a pain and a hassle. Here we have a beautiful set of Prima Luce rings that clamp perfectly onto my telescope and keep it nice and secure. And all this is going on to my Explore Scientific 127 carbon fiber refractor. All right, so first things first, let's start putting together this imaging train. This process is gonna be a little bit different for everyone depending on the gear that you're using, but overall it should be somewhat similar. The first thing you wanna do is install your filters into the filter wheel, which I've already done. For more quality types of filters like chromas, the direction of the filters don't really matter due to its coatings, but the less expensive kinds, you're gonna to wanna to point the reflective side towards the telescope and away from the camera. If you still can't tell, there's sometimes an arrow on the rim of the filter that points to which side should be facing the telescope. Next, two things that you're gonna need is your camera and your filter wheel. Some filter wheels you can screw onto the camera just using bolts, but for this one, I'm just gonna use an adapter and just gonna screw it on just like this. Next comes the op access guider, which can take some work and fiddling around with, but once you set it up correctly, it's good and you don't need to do it again for a while. So first, I wanna thread on this op access guider adapter. And next, you wanna put on the guider. You wanna make sure that your prism is flush with your sensor and not at some weird angle. Also, you might need to move this column up and down so that it's close enough to the sensor to grab some light without blocking the sensor. Next, you wanna add your guide camera. Make note of which way the sensor is facing so that you can line it up nicely with your imaging sensor. And next, we're gonna attach our field flatter. And finally, let's attach our rotator. Now that the imaging section is done, let's put this aside for right now. So now that we put everything aside, let's focus on putting the eagle onto the rings. So first we're gonna open up the rings and place the eagle underneath. 
And now that it's tight in there, we close the rings and turn it right side up. And now it's time to put the telescope in. <gasps> Next, we need to install the focuser. We do that by removing the original knobs that are on here and by putting the electronic focuser over and then tightening this down. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And now it's time to slide our imaging train into our telescope and plug everything in. All right, now that everything is all put together, we'll wait for nighttime and then put this on a mount for a good night of imaging. All right, so we're outside right now. The birds are chirping, the sun is going down. So let's finish setting up these last few steps. First, place the tripod legs on a stable surface and then screw in the tripod spreader. This will improve the sturdiness. Then attach the mount using the screw at the bottom. We can now attach the counterweight, which is really important for accurate tracking, along with the safety of not smashing your scope. After you set up your telescope a few times, you should get a good idea of where your counterweight should be on the counterweight shaft. If you wanna learn some of the reasons why balancing is so important and learn the correct method on how to balance your telescope, click the link right over here. Now that the counterweights are on first, attach your telescope by sliding it in and locking it down. Let's attach the Pole Master, which is a camera designed to help you polar align super easy in under five minutes. If you want to learn our step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use the Pole Master, then click right over here. Finally, the last few steps is to give everything power. I personally use this giant, obnoxious, heavy car battery, which will last for a good amount of time, but I do suggest something more lightweight and astro-related like a Celestron power tank. Now with my one cord that hangs down, I plug it into the adapter and everything is set up, powered, and ready to go. And just like that, you're done. You've gone from having a bunch of parts, gadgets, and gizmos to a fully set up astrophotography rig, ready to take some amazing images. Setups like this don't have to look so intimidating with all of its parts. Once you learn the different pieces and what to do, it becomes just a matter of figuring out what's compatible and then attaching it onto your rig and building it up piece by piece at a time. Anyways, that about wraps up this video. If you've enjoyed this content, learned something fun, or wanna give some appreciation for taking this whole thing apart and putting it back together, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing for more fun tutorials. If you have any suggestions on videos that you would like to see in the future, please leave them down below in the comments. As always, my name is Mac Murdoch here with OPT, and thanks for watching. Clear skies.